Welcome back to Ozarks Tonight. Well, today we are talking about coffee, something a lot of people can't live without. I know I can't every morning. First thing, I have to have some coffee. Well, we have some news for you. This is a great story. A new study shows coffee farmers could lose half of their suitable land due to warming temperatures and extreme weather. Our Elisa Rafa stopped by at a local coffee shop to find out why. Over half of Americans drink coffee every day. On average, three cups a day. That's 66 billion cups a year. And even just here in Springfield, one of our own local coffee shops, they roast four to 600 pounds of beans a week. That's a lot of coffee. Aside from tap water, coffee is America's most consumed beverage. Sleepy-eyed Mondays would just be terrible without it. But a new study shows that could be a new reality. As temperatures warm and heavy rain and drought become more extreme due to climate change, the coffee crop is at risk. In fact, even if we make dramatic cuts to our greenhouse gas emissions, that 2015 study found in the Climatic Change Journal says we could still lose over 40 percent of land suitable for coffee beans by 2050, just 30 years from now. If no emissions are cut at all, that loss nears 60 percent. Whenever there's big weather changes, it's going to affect it. Nate Murphy is general manager and lead roaster at Coffee Ethic in Springfield. He witnessed firsthand how extreme weather impacts coffee farmers in Brazil. They had some coffees drying out on patios and they had an unexpected rainfall come in and so all that coffee got ruined because it got, ended up fermenting. High heat and heavy rain can also intensify coffee rust. And it just eats away the leaves so the cherries get hit by the sun and dry up. A detrimental fungus to the coffee crop. In 2013, coffee rust caused $500 million worth of crop damage in Central America. Coffee beans grow in the bean belt in countries along the equator like Colombia, Brazil, Ethiopia, and Vietnam. It likes elevation, that little bit cooler climate that comes with being up in the mountains. But as temperatures warm, the beans are finding fewer places to call home and the pests and bugs are moving in. You get pretty deep and scientific, but at the end of the day, they're losing crop. And the less crop they have, they can't make up for those lower prices. They need that volume to end up to be able to make a living. If we don't support them and buy the coffee from them, they can't sustain their farms. Michelle Billions is the owner and operator of Coffee Ethic. Our slogan is cut people earth. And so caring for the earth is a huge part of our philosophy and mission. Even on a small local level, her company works closely with these farmers to do their part in combating these challenges. Michelle has made it a point to be green and earth friendly within her shop. We also use recycled aluminum for the, the bar. These chairs are recycled chairs, they're not brand new. In her products, all of our clear cups are corn-based cups, and so they, they will dissolve over time. Beyond to the farmer. But maybe we can help them get the equipment or be prepared for those changes. And everyone in between. It's caring for your community, um, being involved in, in campaigns or whatnot that will give, you know, educate people. For Michelle and Nate. We are seeing the results of climate change. It's been a morning brew type of wake up call. I am worried about it. I am worried about like how it's going to affect the taste of the cup. But they're both optimistic. There's a lot of organizations trying to take steps to like figure out are there certain coffee varieties that resist rust? Are there certain coffee varieties that can grow at a lower uh, elevation? A solution the industry will try to grind out and some food for thought you can brew on the next time you sip your cup of joe. Elisa joins us now to talk a little bit more about the story. Elisa, when I was watching this, and even when we talked about the story before it aired, the 40% is what I was shocked by. So if we don't do anything at all, or even if we do something, I mean, it's for sure at least 40% of this land we're going to lose. That's what this study showed. It was a 2015 study that was peer reviewed and published. And that's what shocked me about it too. Because we usually, we think of these bad effects happening if we don't do anything. Well, this study is showing like, hey, these impacts are happening right now. 2050, it seems like it's so far away. Mm -hmm. That's just 30 years from now. Yeah, exactly. That's it, 30 years. Yeah. It's gonna be in our lifetime. We're still gonna be alive and drinking coffee. 
coffee. Yeah. So it's so tangible to look at that number and think about, you know, how old we will be then if we don't do anything. Uh, Nate mentioned that one of the things that they're trying to do is different coffee varieties. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so they are studying two coffee varieties pretty closely. One is called Arabica, and that is the more common bean. Um, you, you probably drink it more often than you would anything else. And the issue with that plant is it's kind of weak. It doesn't like swings in temperature. It doesn't like the drought and the heavy rain that he was talking about. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't fare well with these, these changes that can't adapt. The Robusta bean, that is a stronger plant. It can handle the changes a little bit better, but it doesn't taste good. <laughs> it's, uh -huh. it's, you know, so, so we've got to find that in between, find a plant uh -huh. that's strong, but you don't also want to, you know, what Michelle was saying, she's worried about how is this going to taste if we've got to play with these different varieties, you know? How did you have this idea in the first place? Well, how did you think about coffee? I saw some information online and I was like, wow, I was startled by those numbers. I was mm -hmm. like, is that, that's it? Even if we act tomorrow. I just always love learning about how weather and climate impact everything we do. I did a story last year on chocolate yes. with Askinosi. Yes pretty similar uh, impacts because it grows in the same region. It's also a sensitive bean plant. So Askinosi was seeing some of the same things um, with chocolate. So it was really interesting for me to see those similarities having the background in both. You had some pictures of Nate in Brazil, how they work so closely mm -hmm. with the farmers that they work with in Brazil. And they're going over there and making sure that everything else that they're doing here, uh, back here at home, are very sustainable too. And the farmers, so Nate has been on trips in Brazil, um, and they pl are planning more for, for 2019. And the farmers that Nate got to visit with in Brazil actually came to Springfield. And they had them in Coffee Ethic, in the coffee oh, shop, awesome. to see what happens with the beans <laughs> and to ask people in the Ozarks, like, hey, do you like the coffee? Do you like our coffee? Yeah. That's awesome. So they really like that education back and yeah. forth because they said what's really interesting is these coffee farmers will do all of this to grow the beans, right? They export them out to the U.S and then a lot of times they don't know whatever happens mm -hmm. with them. They don't know where they go. They don't know how they taste. They don't know if people like them. Yeah. So they said that the farmers really enjoyed being able to come to Springfield and see what happens with their yeah. coffee and, and see people drinking it yeah. and the whole process of that's that's amazing of transforming their coffee beans into a latte. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's yeah. wonderful. Elisa, thank you so much for, for digging into me. this and we will have a link to the entire study yes. on in the story on our website that's ozarksfirst.com. Elisa, thanks. Thank it's you. Been great. <laughs> we'll be right back with more.